Pro Stock Motorcycle fans, here we go again. It's a brand new season. The V-Twin Suzuki rivalry is on as we are down to just four bikes to Gator Nationals. Team Smith versus Team Vance and Hines. This is getting juicy. Here we go. All the fans ready. V-Twin versus Suzuki. Who you got? Uh, Suzuki. He's got Suzuki. We'll see who's got the V-Twins. Got to say a big welcome back to former class champion L.E. Tonglet, who is here, ladies and gentlemen. And then, of course, behind him, the man who dominated last year, Gage Herrera, back from the Brand new season here in Gainesville, Florida, the Gator Nationals, and storylines plenty, guys. Vance and Hines has long dominated this pro stock motorcycle class since 1987. I covered it over the offseason. The conflict of interest comes in where they also service a lot of the class. So their customers, because of the nature of that relationship, always wonder, are they getting the top quality parts that Vance and Hines also has? Before we go any further, let's give you some context, some history. There are the legends, Terry Vance and Byron Hines. They are widely credited for bringing this class to the NHRA, but also some competitors over the years have accused them of receiving rules breaks, favoritism. Now, in the 80s and 90s, this category was a four-cylinder class. Legends like Dave Schultz, John Myers, Angel Sampe, Matt Hines, they rolled the roost. A Harley simply could not compete. It wouldn't stand a chance. Matt Hines was able to win three in a row, but around 2000, everything changed. That's when his family went out and got Harley Davidson. Now, they worked closely with the NHRA to alter the rule book. To change the rule book, it had to be altered. Harleys were now allowed to be 160 cubic inches because anybody knows a V-twin versus a naturally aspirated sport bike straight up just would not stand a chance. So it's important to note from this point forward, NHRA became what is known as a parity class. They said when one combination becomes dominant, we will reel it back to even the playing field. What that resulted in is 10 championships for Eddie Craywick and Andrew Hines on Harley Davidson's over 100 wins. And what nobody expected is nobody else in the class was ever able to obtain one of these bikes. It's something that many believe tainted Pro Stock Motorcycle. They absolutely dominated the class on exclusive equipment. Now enter George Bryson, SNS's George Smith. And Chris Rivas right now. Well, Chris Rivas basically has to just win this round to keep any chance alive. And I'll tell you, he's been doing a good job up to this point. Very good on the lights in 017 and a 002 in the previous round. Chris Rivas comes from behind. He runs a 704, 184 miles an hour. These two talented engine gurus put some thought into it and came up with the SNS 160 inch cubic inch Buell. This was designed to compete with the Harleys. The only difference here is this engine would be available to the public through SNS and still is. Matt Smith thrived with this combination, going on to win six. NHRA championship. So let's bring up the speed. Harley has since departed. Vance and Hines went out, reloaded, and brought in Factory Suzuki. Factory Suzuki now backs the class and is on the midway. When this happened, Matt Smith himself told us he was going back to Suzuki because he believed that's where the rule book favoritism would be. He said NHRA is going to want a Suzuki to win. That's where I'm going. The problem for Smith is Vance and Hines controls the Suzuki market. They're the only ones that make a viable crankshaft for the category, the only ones that make viable billet cases for the category, and they have a brand new, absolutely killer four-valve Vance and Hines head. In short, you have to go through Vance and Hines to be competitive on a Suzuki. The problem comes in, last year, during the countdown, Matt Smith tells us he couldn't get the parts that he needed, so he said he was going back to V-Twin so he could control his own destiny. What he relies on then is NHRA stepping in, maintaining parity like they did for when Vance and Hines had the Harley combination. So coming off a season where Gage Herrera absolutely dominated on his Vance and Hines Hayabusa, qualifying number one at 14 of 15, winning 11 of 15. Matt Smith had hoped there may be some off-season role changes to help the V-Twins. There were not. And that leads us to all this controversy, all this debate, and it's all here for you to see. Will it be more of the same, or are we in for a season of parody? Let's find out. Well, this, case, this man knows something about championships. 
He's won six of them, trying to become the first to win seven. His lovely wife, Angie, back once again after her accident. So good to see her, the whole Salinas family here. It is going to be V Twin versus Suzuki to start the year. What makes this run so juicy is Matt Smith was a Vanson Hines customer last year, bought parts. He said, no, 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 I'm going away from Suzuki, going back to V Twins so that he can control his own destiny. But Vanson Hines has reloaded with some very tough riders as well. Let's get down there and see who's going to win this round. Matt Smith showing he made a good call, 672-201. He is going to the final, guys. Matt Smith to the final. Will it be Matt against his wife or will Gage Herrera, the former champ, step up? Yeah, he's got the Vance and Hines hat on. I see it. We got fans on both sides, and that's what we love. Let's see who's going to the final. Will it be an all Guys, 668 coming off his previous 662. Those boys are fast. Crew chief Andrew Hines has them moving 202 miles an hour. Let's give Angie a big shout out as well, guys, because her first race back, full race after that horrific, horrific crash in St. Louis last year, she goes to the semis, and just like that, the stage is set. Here we go, guys. Here comes Gage Herrera. Really picking up right where he left off last year. After 14 of 15 number one qualifiers, after 11 wins, Gage gonna put it up on the stand, and Team Vance and Hines is gonna go to work. You know what, big round of applause for Angie. She deserves a great comeback performance for her after the injury in St. Louis. And here comes Hubby. They know they gotta work quickly. He's got a smile on his face because he's going to the final, he knows that. He's taking that V-twin to the final, but this is when these teams gotta get to work. It's a quick turnaround. They will put it up on the stand, service the bike, make any adjustments. And right now, Gage Herrera is the one who has lane choice. So there is Gage Herrera with his crew chief, Andrew Hines, the son of Byron Hines, the brother of Matt Hines. And they are getting right to work on this motorcycle. Trying to get it turned around with the Suzuki versus V-Twin Showdown. See, it's like a family reunion here in Gainesville. My buddy Tom Lachance, remember when I announced my first race, 01, you were in the tower in Gainesville? Thank you, sir. <laughs> He's awesome. AMA Pro Star, the good old days. All right. Good to see Ricky G in the house with that Kawasaki. You know we got to represent. Amen, amen. Ricky, a big opportunity for his nephew over here, Richard. We are very, very happy for Richard and Gabe. The guy in the golf cart just stopped. He said, hey, I heard you've been getting spicy. Hey, we're covering a real story here. That for years, they've run this race shop where they lease and sell engines to customers. And for many people, that's the only way in. And since 1987, only, only four teams, only four non-Vance and Hines teams have been able to win a championship out here. So a lot of people talk about the control that they have. And I know some of you are saying, hey, Vance and Hines just works harder. Yes, guys, they do work harder. But when you're selling, when you're supposed to be selling what you race, trust me, some of these bills would blow your mind. I'll tell you something else that a lot of people don't realize that makes me a little uneasy. I love competition. I love pure sports. Ever since I've been out here, anybody affiliated with Vance and Hines is so scared to say anything about them. They're scared they're gonna get their power cut. They're scared they're gonna get an engine that maybe has a few horse less than everybody else. That's real talk that's been going on out here. Why did Matt Smith walk away from a Suzuki sponsorship to go V-Twin racing once again? That's how you won all his championships on V-Twin engines, which by the way are not Vance and Hines engines. You know, like I said, it, it's good and bad. The pro is that Terry Vance has brought a whole lot of money in this class. Here's the stain, here's the blight on their resume. And I say this for Andrew Hines and Eddie Craywick. For 18 years, they had a Harley Davidson sponsorship. Nobody else in the class was allowed to own a Harley. We don't know the real story. I've heard conflicting reports. History will show no other racer, despite attempts, was ever able to buy a Harley Davidson. So what they did for 18 years, is 110 championship and absolutely smashed their competitors. And because of that, here's what I worry about. I love NHRA, I love this class, but welcome to 2024. That is now killing the class. We had 18 bikes here at the Gator Nationals. We used to have almost 30. So thank you, all these competitors showing up. We're gonna try to keep this thing going, but I think it is time to step in. I ask your ideas down below, even the playing field. What I said in Pomona too, 
these bikes from the factory are really, really fast. Why? People have to get Vance and Hines cylinder heads and Vance and Hines cases. Why can't we get them from Suzuki, Kawasaki, places where everybody can get them? And one more thing, if you remember, Matt Smith, when he was running for a championship last year in the countdown, couldn't get a crankshaft from Vance and Hines, his competitor. Now, was it a legit shortage? It certainly could have been, but boy, it raises an eyebrow when your competitor, who's won the last three championships, can't get the part that he needs when he's competing with you for a championship. Here's Matt servicing away, getting ready to go for the final. Here's another thing I want to say though, this has absolutely nothing to do with Gage Herrera and Richard Gatson. I am fans of theirs. Well, I've said this before, guys, too, and I want to make this unequivocally clear. This has nothing to do with Gage Herrera and Richard Gatz. And I know a lot of people, when I covered this story, which goes all the way back to 1987, are fans of Richard and Gage and said, wait a minute, what are you doing? Listen, they're doing what they should do. They're taking advantage of amazing opportunities, and they are both superstar riders. And I have promised them, when it comes to interviews in the media suite, things like that, I'm not going to ask them about any of the politics at all. All when we, we ask for, an even shake. For the rest of the field... I'm not so sure there's there's an even shaker there has been out here but nonetheless at least if we get this rivalry going this v-twin suzuki rivalry going it's something that we can look forward to and you can see the trust matt has in his team as they're servicing the bike he's taking some photos big smile on his face going to the final matt trying to become the first pro stock motorcycle racer in history to win seven championships could this be the start of it He's over the moon, big line out here as well for the Matt Smith trailer. People looking on at Vance and Hines. There is the crew getting to work. We got a lot of resources over here, a lot of talented guys. There is no denying that, ladies and gentlemen. No denying that 100%. And there is the man who I was talking about before, full-time champion, 10 championships between these two guys. Angie Smith up big. Wait. Look at the big line of autographs down here. Autograph secrets for Angie. Do we got any Angie Smith fans down here? I think we do. How about it? Angie, welcome Hi. back. First full race. Pomona didn't really count as a full right. race, but you make it to the semis. How are you feeling first off? How's I'm the good. toes? I'm good. Everything's good. Um, I'm 100% healed. I'm back in the gym six days of my life. is good. So awesome. How exciting was it to make it back to the semis here? It was really good, but I think I was more happy about my 69 pass. <laughs> yeah, big congratulations. Awesome, man. What do you think about Hubby here on the V-Twins? He's doing great. Going I to mean, the final. He's the last man standing on the V-Twin side, so hopefully we can get it done. It's going to be exciting, Angie. Thanks so much. Congratulations, Thank guys. Everybody getting autographs and pictures <laughs> down here. Right. Big congrats. Thank you, guys. 100%. Angie Smith pumped up over what her husband, Matt Smith, was able to do. I think I have a unique perspective because I've been out here so long and I'm still somewhat young enough that I see the older generation, unfortunately, leaving us. I don't see many young kids coming in and I want NHRA to flourish and survive. And I think the whole presentation in the entire pro stock motorcycle class needs a makeover because let me say this and be very clear. There are talented individuals in there. There are great racers in there. The whole thing just needs a makeover. We need a category where number 16 can win. How about this, guys? How about if Vance and Hines wants to service the class? How about a bike lottery? Let's bring 16 motorcycles out. Let's draw chips. How about an engine lottery? How about an engine claim roll? There's a lot of things you can do that have never been done out here. Why? Because remember, they want to get the big sponsors and have a race team, and they want to service the field, and then they want to win. It's a conflict of interest that I think is killing the class. That's all, guys. That's all I have to say about that. Here we go, guys. We are set for the first final on the beach win. Vance and Hines team now with Suzuki horsepower. Here we go, guys. Cage with the big number one. They always take a little extra time lining up the Pro Stock motorcycle. Believe it or not, it's more critical for a Pro Stock motorcycle to be lined up straight than it is any other machine. Gage and Matt, they've only raced one other time in the final round. Gage got the better of that. Of course, he's only ever had one final round loss, and that was Stevie J. Here we go again this season, guys. 663 Gage Herrera, absolutely amazing run. Has got Matt by more than a tenth. 
That's where I'm starting saying parody. Oh, I don't know. Nonetheless, Gage is going to be very, very tough to beat all year long. Let's take another look at their final, and let's remember what we said in the beginning of this video. Remember when Vance and Hines brought in the Harley-Davidson combination? NHRA said we would maintain parity between the two brands if one runs away with it. Guys, Alan Reinhardt just announced Gage Herrera now has the 10 quickest runs in pro stock motorcycle history. Truly amazing, and again, if you're a casual fan, I'm not hating, love those guys. But when the only place right now you can get a set of billet cases is from Vance and Hines, the only place you can get a crankshaft is from Vance and Hines. You got two options when it comes to cylinder heads, but they're just destroying their customers. And because of that, they've only got one full-time customer left. Here's another piece of inside info, guys. Back when I first started, coming to this class many years ago, Vance and Hines, they service just about everybody in the class. Now, they only have one full-time customer left. They did start the Ellie Tonglet rental program, which I think is by design. That's why they're showing people, hey, you need to rent a bike from us to have an opportunity. All these other teams, Joey Gladstone, War, they're buying parts off Vance and Hines, but what they're doing is they have their own engine program. So again, how equitable is that? Why, why do we have Vance and Hines selling them parts at all? Why don't we have a third party parts manufacturer out here to keep things even? Let's let the hardest working teams, the smartest working teams, and the best riders win. And I do believe Vance and Hines has a lot of them, but I believe the rest of the class is pretty tough as well. But I think it's safe to say with Matt Smith taking all of his team bikes over to V-Twin, it's gonna make for a very competitive year. I keep driving home these points, but here's another one, competitors, that will make you raise an eyebrow, because I know a lot of you maybe still aren't with me. If Vance and Hines 100% sold exactly what they raced, the whole tune-up, wouldn't we see an entire field of Vance and Hines bikes? They're down to one full-time customer, guys. That's it. This business model has run its course. I didn't miss a beat, the bike didn't miss a beat. So it was, we were, even though I didn't do no testing over the off season, I felt like we didn't have off season, honestly. It felt like back at home and uh, I'm glad to come home with the win. Think we're off to a good start with parody? No. Oh. Uh, my husband got, out, Matt got outrun a, a tenth in the final. Um, I went 69 and uh, I think he went 63. That was, you know, 600s right there. So, um, we're not even close. I mean, we're racing for second. So that's all I need to say. I mean, I don't know how to fix it. I'm not the tech department. I just know that things are gonna start dropping off from teams and things like that if we don't fix it. And I don't want this class to go away. Here with the six time champion, Matt Smith. Matt, big congratulations. You go to the final on the V-Twin Red Rocket, your first V-Twin final round appearance yeah. since Vegas. 2022 and let's just jump right into it here we've had a lot of off-season discussion i'm sure you followed along tricky ricky chimed in why we got rent why could not let somebody like my son do his own stuff and be competitive when he now if matthew was 500 off a of buell or 10th off a of buell i'd say okay son you need to go to work but when he's got the fastest product in his class and can't run within five to eight hundreds to a tenth of the Suzuki's. Don't be ignorant about it. Make a rule change. You can't tell me that there ain't something going on here. I'm not dumb. I'm 70 years old and I'm not a kid. I know what's going on and everybody out here that really knows what about racing sees what's going on. And like I said, I'd be ashamed and I don't mind saying it. I'll call anybody out. I would be ashamed to hold a trophy up if I was Vance and Hines with the rules that they've had all these careers honing their own product. You can't buy it. Now to come out with the same deal with a Suzuki, you can't buy it. You won them races last year because you had the field covered 700 to a tenth. Really? Really, Vance and Hines? You really think you've done something? 
you ain't done nothing. But I'd be ashamed to think that I had the rules in that kind of favor and I'm happy because I won. There's no way. You can't look in that mirror every morning and get up and realize that you won what you won because of what you've done legally. Bullshit. Well, you're telling it like it is. We you appreciate damn right your I strong am. opinion. I, I... Do we have parity in this class? We, we had a V-twin, the Suzuki in the final, and two Suzukis and two V-twins in the semis. That seems like a good sign. What are your thoughts after race one? Uh, absolutely do not have parity. Uh, this class is so uh, diverse right now, I guess you would say. We, uh, you have Suzukis and you have V-twins. And the V-twins are clearly seven, eight hundreds behind. Gage went 62, and you went 69. Um, we, we won the V-twin class. And basically it's the V-twins uh, we have to compete against ourselves. And then you've got the Suzuki. So in my opinion, um, right now there is no parity in the class. You, you can't have one bike that's seven, eight hundreds faster than everybody else. We had that all last year, and then HRE did jack shit about it. You know, um, they should have made rule change over the winter and they did nothing. And now they come right out the first race of the year and did the same thing. And we found power over the winter in our program and we're still 700s behind. So um, they can't do nothing major. The only thing they can do now is is put 15 pounds on them, make them go to 660 pounds, and they need to take the red fuel away. The red fuel away does not need to be out here in our class. It's not in pro stock car, so it does not need to be in pro stock bike. I'm sorry, what did you say there, the red? The red fuel, so there's there's two brands of fuel in this okay. class, that's and that's said. because of Vance and Hines. Okay. Vance and Hines, three, four years ago, got Sunoco to develop a fuel for them for their Suzuki program. Um, they At the time, they needed help, so NHRA allowed it. Well, then, next thing you know, NHRA approves a four-valve head for them. And next thing you know, they approve Billy Cases. Then they approve a body work for them that's more aerodynamic. And they haven't taken them away. They've gave, 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 gave. They gave them four things, and the V-Twins have gotten nothing since then. And in my opinion, take the red fuel away, and they need to be 660 pounds. And let's see if that helps in Charlotte. If it doesn't help, I don't know what the next step is. They should have took about 150 cc's away from them, you know, over the winter, which would have just been a, cr a simple crank fix. But they didn't do that. Yes. They said everything was good. And clearly everything was not good because Gage won, would have won every race last year if he wouldn't have red lit or broke in, in the round. Um, so, honestly, there's no parity in our class. And everybody from every V Twin out here is a filler, and every other Suzuki is a filler that's not on the Van Stein's team. Very, very interesting. And we know that all this prompted you to switch to V Twin. So, Gage last year, amazing season, wins 11 out of 15, number one qualifier, 14 of 15. What was that process like trying to inquire whether or not Tech would make any changes? What was the dialogue like with Tech? That I think a lot of people were, were stunned that there wasn't at least a minor change. I know probably you were, right? That there wasn't some type of off-season change to help the V-Twins? Yeah, I was told at Pomona that there would be a change for next year. That would be this year. And I waited all through December, nothing ever got done. I called after the first year, I said, hey, are y'all gonna make a rule change? And they said, no, we think it's all fair. And I'm like, what notes and what are y'all looking at? Because obviously you're not looking at what everybody else is looking at. I mean, the whole world knows they have a big advantage. Um, anytime I outran anybody over 500s, I got slapped with weight or I got a rule change. And I just don't get it. They go, well, you need to work on your 60 foot. Well, guess what? The whole class can't just go magically make their 60 foot better. And not only are they outrun us in 60 foot, they're outrun us in the back half too. So it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword here. Everybody's coming to a gunfight with a knife. And, and we all know how that's gonna work out. Well, you're the tech expert here. I know one thing that a lot of people said over the off season though is they believe adding weight to the bikes when you don't dictate where the weight goes is not helping. If it's more ballast in the front of the motorcycle, it might help them plant, might help them 60 foot better. Some have suggested that the weight needs to go behind the crank and up high, maybe under the seat. What are your thoughts on things like that? that that's fine. I, I don't care if we have a front percentage, rear percentage of weight. At this point, it really doesn't matter. I just want to see NHRA do something. And they need to do something besides just, oh, we're going to put five pounds on a bike. Five pounds is nothing. 
when, when I was 500 faster than everybody else, it was a 15 pound weight swing. They've done nothing, absolutely nothing to solve this problem since last year. And it's really frustrating. It's frustrating for my sponsors. It's frustrating for our team because we've worked really hard over the off season, built a new bike, spent a lot of money, found a power, and we still come out here. We qualified second, we went to the finals, but we're still seven, eight hundreds behind. And it's just, it's no fun. And I know the other V-Twins didn't pick up because we outrun the other V-Twins even more than we did, than Angie did last year. So it, it's gotta be frustrating for them too, because in the grand scheme of things, we are seven, eight hundreds behind. The other V-Twins are 1500s, two, two tenths behind. So it, it's not gonna be long. We're gonna have short fields and if I didn't have a sponsor, I wouldn't be out here. Well, that's what I'm kind of concerned about. That I love this class. I love everybody involved. I think it's awesome. But this has been going on for, for so long. I don't think a lot of the, the casual fans understand the politics. And, and maybe they don't even have to. But the facts are this. You remember, I was here with you at your first race, 2003, I think, right? 2003, your first yeah. NHRA race. You're yep. on a Paul Gast bike. We had 25, 30 bikes trying to qualify. We had 18 here this weekend. Are, are you getting concerned that uh, some of these other competitors may get worn out. That what do we got to do to keep this class healthy? What do we have to do to fix this and bring some true competition back? Well, honestly, I wish we had about 11 or 12 bikes so it, it wake up in HRE because they they it's I'm, I'm really really concerned because Terry Vance plays such a big role in NHRE. Not only does he donate you know a million dollar check every year to NHRE for you know for their charity calls. Um, also, his son works for NHRA, you know? So we have family that works for NHRA. We're, we're giving money to NHRA. And we all know last year that their sponsor is now the official sponsor of NHRA. So there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that people don't realize. And I just wanna see everybody have a fair shake of winning. And it really sucks. Not only does it suck for our team, but it sucks for the other 10 to 12 teams that's out here trying to do this ones that have sponsors, one that don't have sponsors, it's it's not a level playing field. And that's all I ask, I make it a level playing field. I agree, all right, so let's end on a positive note. Here's what we end on. I love this sport, you love this sport. This is where I'm at with Joe Koenig too. I talk about him, that we talk. There's so many stories from the past that the public just is unaware of, but how do we fix it? I cover motorcycle drag racing coast to coast. There's people with money, there's people with talent, there's people that love competition. How do we truly fix it out here so that hard work and talent wins out and there's not always these questions wondering if people are getting roll breaks or if there's favoritism or if there's politics or if somebody falls out of out of favor with a certain parts manufacturer how do we fix this thing it's a simple fix this is a parity class pro stock bike pro mod factory stock that's all become parity classes in hra because you have different makes all right so the simple fix is every three races if a brand is 500 or more faster, quicker, you penalize that brand to bring them back to the other ones. And it's very easy. Do it every three races. If somebody has advantage for three races, great, that's fine. But after that, they get slapped with something and it pulls them back to everybody else. That's what should be done. That's what they do in Pro Mod. That's what they do in factory stock, but they're not doing it in Pro Stock Bike. They used to do it. Why, I don't know why they're not doing it anymore. So. Um, all I can say is that big black trailer over there, they have a lot of pull within HRA. And you know, maybe it's uh it's the Vance and Hines uh, you know, running our class. That's what it's that's what it boils down to, in my opinion. Well I gotta sneak one more in then and I don't wanna get too negative here, but just to some, all these comments I've had over the off season where a lot of people love Vance and Hines. Those guys work hard, they do. Terry and Byron, legends, they work hard. But here's my question. Why are their customers so far behind? Tim Kalungian works hard. Chase Van Zandt's a great rider. He's Rookie of the Year. Joey Gladstone works hard. He's got Corey Reed behind him. He's got KB Titan behind him. Why are there? Why did Matt Smith have problems last year down the stretch in a championship situation getting getting the parts that he needed? What well, are they? well, for one, the head that I saw when I first committed to go Suzuki racing was a a four valve head of Vance Hines. The problem is. That's not what they're running. They are running a, a four valve Vance and Hans head, but nobody else has that head. Okay, it's different. It's different. Oh. The outside appearance looked close to the same, but it's not. All right, I've seen it one. Joey Glassstone has one. 
And before you quit Vance Nines, they have one. They have one of those heads and they have one of the throttle bodies that everybody's run, their, that their camp's running. Nobody else can buy the heads that Vance and Hines is running. So they have two different versions. Just letting everybody know that monster heads, whatever Mitch Brown says, that's what everybody's got. Vance and Hines, they got two different heads. They got a version one, they got a version two that nobody gets, period, point blank. If you're not a rental bike from them, you don't get it. The only one that has one that's not outside their camp is Joey Gladstone, and he had one when he was in with them, and then he quit them, and he's got one. So wow. that's that's the whole truth. The Salinas team, they didn't have any because Kalungi didn't, didn't have none. Nobody has that style head that they're running, and that's the problem I have. And you saw this head with your own eyes? Saw it my own eyes. Good Lord. So this answers the question that, man, I'll tell you, it's been a rough off season for Cycle Drag. Brad Mummert, for example, I love the guy. I've been to his garage, I love him. We got into an argument that he says, what does Vance and Hines have that Matt can't buy? Matt can buy everything. So you're here to, you're here telling me right now that you believe you can't buy everything if you were switching over to Suzuki. No, I can't. I, I asked to buy, when I had a meeting with Andrew, Eddie, this was at Indy, and Byron Hines. Byron Hines pulled Angel's motor out from under the bench, showed me the head and said, told Andrew and Eddie to give me whatever I wanted. He wanted me to have the same stuff that they had. Eddie and Andrew wouldn't give me that because they know I could take that stuff and run with them. Now, anytime I get the same equipment, the same stuff as everybody else has, I can run with them. And if I've got the same stuff and I can't run, then I'm going home and doing homework. But when I have the same stuff as what every other V-Twin has out here, I got the same cylinder heads, same block, same everything. I outrun every V-Twin out here. And I'd do the same thing with them guys if they ha if they sold the version two head with the throttle bodies that they're making. Wow. And that's the problem. And not only that, they build the crankshafts for everybody out here. Every time I bought a crank from Vance and Hines, the most I get was 15 laps. The most before it went bad. I bought a crank from George Baber at the beginning of the year. It got 38 laps before something happened to it. So explain that to me. Same tune up, same everything. I buy a crank from somebody else that they sell to somebody else, a customer of theirs, and I go more passes on it, but then when they sell me stuff, I get hardly anything. Gosh. And that's what I'm pissed about. That's why I quit. That's why I quit the Suzuki program, because it's not that we didn't have power. We had great power. I was getting shitty parts to make the thing run right. Well, I'm glad you're still out here. I'm glad this class is still healthy. Hopefully we can fix it. You know, I, I would love to talk to those guys. Those guys do not like, have not for 25 years like talking to me. I did hear one thing though, and maybe I should get your response through this, that I heard, again, this is hearsay through another reporter, but it's a trusted source that Eddie's retort to you is he says, well, we can't get Matt Smith's cams, so it's all the same. What would you say to that? He can get the cams. I'll give him blank cams just like they gave me blank cams. They got to figure that out, you know. That that's what they did to me. I bought I bought one of their heads and got blank cams. So same thing. It's not the camshafts. It's the cylinder head. And when they have bolt on spigots and they can do all the stuff they can in CAD and they make their own stuff, nobody has that stuff. And that's that's the whole problem. And if a racer wants to go V twin racing right now, everything on that V twin is pretty much available, right? Like flat for fine Ryan Ayler and Mark Ingwersen and the Aranas. All the V-Twin stuff available. Am I right or am I wrong when I say that? Everything is available, S&S. Wow. Everything I have from S&S, from, from the cases to the cylinder heads to the throttle bodies. I run the stock throttle bodies. I just do some little stuff to the top of them. Stock throttle bodies. All these other guys are making special throttle bodies for the V-Twins. I run the stock throttle bodies that S&S has. And, and everybody tries to go in a different direction with a lot of stuff. The stuff that we developed with that victory program is the same stuff I'm running this day, and it's the fastest stuff out here. Very cool, man. Good stuff. Do appreciate it, and we look forward to you know what will be an exciting year. Hey, rivalries are good. I can tell right now. There's it's like the Yankees and the Red Sox over here, Smiths versus Vance and Hines. So perhaps a good thing for the class, Matt. And uh, we wish you all the best here as you try to win championship number seven. Anybody you'd like to thank before we go? Yeah, and, and I just want to say one more thing. Sure. I'm not crying about this. And a lot of people say, well, Matt's crying about this and crying about that. I'm stating facts. And I'm gonna step in and back you up on that one. You or Ricky, listen, you guys have dedicated your lives to this. 
trust me, I get more haters than anybody. Sometimes those hater comments, take those as a compliment because that shows that people care. You're not crying. Yeah. You're passionate and you're out here. You're a six time champ. You've got done. One, one other thing too that I got to touch on is some people will say, hey, Matt did pretty well, six championships. But I want to make it clear, you won all six with your own motor program. And I do think it was a pretty interesting area when Harley pulled out. I think it was the perfect time to maybe go after it. And just like you said about uh, that season, it had so much parody. It came down to Angel, Steve Johnson, and you last race of the year. Me as a reporter, that's what I root for. I just want good competition, parody, nobody running away with it because I think you guys are all, all talented out here. And I think that's probably the way it should be. I think it's a way better for the fans, for everybody, when they see more than one bright bike winning a race. You know, the year, not last year, but the year before, we had seven different riders, you know, win. Last year, the only reason that there was four different riders that won is one because he red lit one race, and the other three was because he broke, you know. So if it wasn't for that, he would have won every race. And that's where we just have to have a, I'm not, Gage is a great rider. He I'm sure not taking is. anything away from yes. Gage. It's just that they have a superior performance advantage that NHRA needs to pull that back. And if they do that, we're gonna have a lot more winners by everybody, not just Matt Smith racing, by the Aronners, by Ron Ayler, by Mark Ingerson, by the war team, by Joey Glass and them. Everybody has a chance. Nobody has a chance right now. I agree with that. That's the comment I get, like I said, a lot of times people say, hey, Vance and Hines works harder than everybody, they're awesome. They are awesome, but maybe to wrap this up, like you said about everything being available, it could a potential fix be third party parts manufacturer is the true conflict of interest winning championships against your customers is that maybe something that has tainted this class and that we just legitimately need an unbiased third party parts manufacturer what do you think about that i mean to me that that would be fine i i don't have a problem with it you know if, if the suzuki's definitely need a, a a plain bearing crank they don't need the roller bearing crank shafts but the problem is right now, nobody's making it. Everybody says they're building one. War's been building one for three years and nobody's got one. Um, so Vance and I is Dick State's old crankshaft. So if you don't, if you run a Suzuki, you have to buy their crankshaft. And so they control that class and everything with that. At least with our V-Twin stuff, there's multiple suppliers of crankshafts, you know, from SNS to Winberg to SCAT to, there's numerous other ones. So all in all, I'm saying is, is you need people to be able to make their own stuff. And nobody in the world can make a crankshaft but Vance and Hines because they're the only ones that has the technology. They're the only ones that has the, the parts and pieces to do that. Um, I'm going home and the Red Rock is getting totally stripped and I'm putting a max on it. And all I can say is I'll be able to control everything a lot better. It's gonna be an interesting year. Congratulations you, runner up performance. Matt Smith here at the Gator Nationals looking for championship number seven this year. So how about that, guys? Wow, well, putting a bow on this thing, could this be more fan interest? Yankees, Red Sox, Michigan, Michigan State. We got some fans hanging out at the Gators. You guys have a good time watching those motorcycles. Thank you for what's your name? Uh, my name's Ed. And? Corey. From? From uh, West, West Palm. Yeah. West Palm, Love thanks for being that. here, guys. Love thanks that. for watching Cycle Drag. And HRA that. this year, guys, gonna be awesome. Stay tuned to Fox Sports 1 and Cycle Drag. We got your back, and you'll know if there's anything fast motorcycles we're in. If you like this video, here's another one for you. Subscribe right in the middle. From Gainesville, Cycle Drag rolls on.